Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, Arise. And it is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. While Jesus was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house, and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went through all that district. In verse Number 24, Jesus said, The girl is not dead, but sleeping. They sneered when Jesus said this. They knew the girl was dead. Back then, a deceased person had to be buried on the same day. So it was very important that they were sure that the person was dead. When Jesus talks of death, however... He sees it through the eyes of God. He speaks not only of the physical aspect of our life, the part that's a function of the cells in our body, but he speaks also about a life, a spiritual life, that is related to God. That life comes from God and is sustained by God. But if it's severed, it could die. That's why a person can be spiritually dead, yet still seem to be alive and healthy in a physical way. That's what Jesus is aiming at when he says, let the dead bury the dead. In the same way, a person can be spiritually alive despite lying dead in a coffin. That's why when the faithful dies, it's called falling asleep. You're not dead. You're sleeping. Because you're in God's hands, and one day you will wake up when he says those powerful words, I say to you, arise. We've spoken before about the life we get from Christ, the new life that lives in us here on earth. Although it is hidden and obscure, and in the resurrection takes on a new image, so we become like him, like Christ was after his resurrection. Over the next few days, we'll have the occasion to talk more closely about life, death, and resurrection. Death is the only sure thing that's going to happen in our future. Despite this, people have an apparent tendency to push away the thought of it. It's something people don't eagerly talk about. and Maybe some don't even acknowledge it. It's one of the signs of how unrealistic unbelief can be. Death and what happens afterward are a part of our reality. It's true that we don't know much about what happens after we die. But there is something that we can know and what God wants us to know about life after death. And that's what we're going to talk about over the next couple of days as we discuss the book 
of Philippians. Let us pray. Lord, it's important for us to know that you are with us now and that you are our Lord and Savior. You give us so much every day and you have so much work for us to do. And we can't ask for more. Yet still in your kindness you have spoken to us about things that no one can explore. You've given us the promise of a future that's far beyond anything we can understand. Therefore, we open our hearts and thank you for everything you want us to have. Preserve our hearts in humbleness so we never ask for more and never try to search for the things you still hold secret. We know that someday we will see you face to face and know everything. Praise be to you today for your inexhaustible gifts. Jesus, in your holy name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.